Hi, welcome to the 2018 Ericsson OSSBSS User Group in New York. I'm Des Blanchfield, and I have the pleasure of being joined by Amit Kapoor. Hi, Amit, how are you? Hi, thank you very much. Good. And yourself? I'm doing great, and what yeah. an exciting week we've got here in New York. Uh, before we get into some of the big topics around what's happening in 5G and the world of Verizon, the relationship with uh, Ericsson and, and uh, software defined networks and WANs and so forth, uh, could you just briefly introduce yourself and your role within the Verizon team? Sure, absolutely. My name is Amit Kapoor, and I uh, head the uh, product manager management division for our virtual network services portfolio, which essentially encompasses all the capabilities we deliver to our, our global business customers, uh, ranging from software defined to virtualization and all of the deployment models and options that, that enables those functionality. That's, a, that's an exciting role. It is. So uh, we've got a couple of exciting days here in New York and there's a lot we can talk about, but I'd, I'd like to just focus on a couple of the key ones that I know that are in your space in particular. Um, enterprise, the mobility challenge around that, software-defined infrastructure, particularly software-defined networking and WAN. Uh, what are some of the big key takeaways from this week that you'd like people to sort of take home with them and consider and potentially pick up the phone and talk to you about? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the interesting opportunities for this uh, a, a conference like this is the ability for uh, various operators to uh, not just uh, interoperate and, and certainly uh, cooperate, if you will, from the standpoint of what you can do in driving partnerships that enable uh, what the uh, business and consumer demands and needs are. Right. But also, if you look at the transformation that's uh, occurring throughout the industry in 5G and, uh, and IoT, it's going to require a, a level of a business level transformation, things like what's happening in, in this uh, uh, conference regarding OSS and BSS. And right. How do we uh, uh, interoperate? How do we together uh, drive the requirements back into not just our vendor community, also back into the industry and, and the standardization uh, bodies as well, uh, such that we can all jointly go to market and then are all benefiting from, from mm -hmm. the, the disruption that's occurring. Uh, I think the other aspect of this is the expectation of the global the, the, the global demand. Uh, right. Things like if I look at the, the global business landscape, uh, the expectation is that the operators themselves are just automatically leveraging all this disruption and technology to enable their business outcomes. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to achieve that, you do have to have a level of cooperation between the, the various operators. And that's mm -hmm. one of the, the key takeaways I see um, uh, as occurring from this, not to mention, of course, the, the obvious one of having the operator share back with the, our, right. our key partners of, of what are our requirements. You know, mm -hmm. How do you enable uh, the disruption that we have to do within our business? Uh, there's a, a couple of analogies around this in, in the banking industry where you know open banking has become a thing and, and once we had very solid financial service uh, players and, and now they're being expected to be very open. I see this being very similar to what's happening in the telco and the mobility market, particularly with enterprise. You know, we talked about the soft camera earlier with sort of, you know, not so much a vendor lock in piece, but just the interoperability that you're not always going to have every part of the organization. Some organizations are very big. Uh, what does that look like in your life uh, in the world of Verizon when you're working with Ericsson to build that capability to do handoffs in various places, cross billing? I mean, there must be some very big challenges. What are some of the key things you can sort of share with as far as insights go around what you've done so far and, and what you might be planning for? Absolutely. When we started down this journey uh, in our partnership with Ericsson, uh, what was really interesting is we, we knew we were both coming to the market and bringing out solutions to the market that was highly disruptive. Right. Uh, in, this, in this emerging landscape, uh, what's really important is the ability for, um, uh, for us both uh, in order to have a cooperation that allows us to innovate uh, as we are learning and as we are developing these capabilities okay. and bringing, bringing them to the market. The, the challenges we both face, frankly, uh, between Verizon and Ericsson in order to drive this functionality and deliver what we have delivered uh, successfully into the market uh, meant really creating an entire disruption across um, how we uh, monetize these services, right? And in the traditional model, you mm -hmm. you think uh, from the enterprise side, for example, they buy boxes, and those boxes had some kind of a capability yeah. on those, and yeah. so on and so forth. Uh, now you're thinking about in the monetization aspect of what you're trying to deliver, usage base, and more of a consumption base mm -hmm. is really the the the, the demand. Uh, from an operational landscape, the, the disruption had to change from uh, think of managing boxes, having to deal with truck rolls and so on and so forth, now thinking about how applications right. and what, what uh, virtualization did into the data center world, we are now doing in the networking side. Right. Right. And then the last piece is the expectation. Uh, from the, uh, the the expectation of the uh, the consumer as a result of all this, this this disruption is everything just works on demand. In order for that to mm -hmm. happen, uh, there is an entire uh, uh, mind shift that has to occur in the organization. Delivering things that's appliance based generally had a long cycle, right? Yeah. Long yeah. Go, go, go to market cycle, long productization cycle. Uh, once again, the expectation is is I'm not saying to the scale of, of, of what hyperconvergence does mm -hmm. uh, uh, or hyperscaling does into the application world, but something. To 
to that effect of how yeah. do you bring yeah. that agility of, of application application deployment dynamically to that consumption. Um, and those are, you know, I think, some of the, the key drivers that have to be hit uh, uh, as, as our, our partnership evolved. In the enterprise space, I think you mentioned this when we were talking off camera, and, and I, it really struck a chord with you, and you mentioned the term outcomes. Right. And, and I think that's something that a lot of people who are, who are viewing will be interested in getting some, some I guess, a, a general sense for from you, and that is that when you're working with some of your enterprise clients and they're thinking about software defined wide area networking, uh, in building uh, switch fabrics and so forth, and handoff from what used to be Wi-Fi to, to 4G, now instead sort of 5G and building to 5G outside, uh, what does that look like when you're talking to your enterprise clients and you're talking about some of these things that are coming about and you know, they may not be doing it yet, but they're planning for that. Really keen to get a bit of an insight on kind of what's happening with the Ericsson BSS OSS platforms that you're leveraging and how Verizon's sort of taking that to their enterprise clients. Yeah, sure, absolutely. It's a valid question. In fact, most of our, our, our customers, frankly, uh, especially as you talk about very specific verticals, uh, they're having an outcome conversation with yes. us. They're not having a conversation about technology. Uh, they're they're you know they're they're seeing all of the industry trends. They're seeing all all of this technology is supposed to enable something. Mm -hmm. The outcome is mm -hmm. what I care about. Um, everybody um, um, has a different definition of what an outcome is. Uh, sometimes an outcome might be an, um, a measure of an application or an application does in the network and then how are you enabling that need. So if it's a manufacturing use case or whether it's a banking use case, mm -hmm. uh, how do those sensors potentially reach their, their core applications um, and what is the network doing in order to be more intelligent to that need. Um, at the end of the day, the outcome is what they're, what they're wanting yeah, to consume yeah. from us. One of the key, key things we're trying to do uh, as part of this partnership and drive back, once again, back to the innovation, we started off the journey um, with Ericsson in disrupting and building what's called closed loop assurance. So right. a self-healing network that allows, once again, uh, back to my application use case, right? Allows an application to, to uh, uh, have a, a brownout or some, some degradation and then have the, mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the engine, if you will, the entire orchestration engine and self-heal based on the assurance metrics. Uh, one of the evolutions we see this uh, uh, working towards is not just around what the network components does, but also what the application or the particular workloads okay. are doing for the businesses. If that's one right. of the key definitions of their outcome, how do we dynamically migrate these these, these capabilities from that uh, from that functionality and then drive that back into the into the engine? Another aspect of this is how does the how does the, the network uh, act like a sensor in order to drive that outcome? So if the if the ask from the uh, the enterprise organization is uh, I want to have a set of sensors, these set of sensors are high, high priority traffic. How does the network adapt to those particular needs right. versus dynamically saying, you know, if, if during a certain time of day or during a certain period of the, of the year, if everyone's watching, you know, their, 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 their favorite sporting event the, within the organization, that the network is able to dynamically adapt to those yep. particular needs to ensure the business critical applications are able to, to achieve their, their functions. And ultimately, it's that productivity that's, a, that's a, the, the key uh, outcome that our businesses are looking for. And it seems to me that, uh, you know, when we used to think about uh, the big sunk costs and, and, and sort of 10 to 15 year ROIs that go into building an operator or a carrier space, that's sort of coming down to not years, but almost months and hours in some cases. Uh, but that availability is moving up the stack. So the sort of the five nines that you used to have to have for the avoiding the outages of just picking up a cell seems to be moving all the way up the stack to the point where the applications are effectively being treated like infrastructure, which I guess is full cycle, isn't it? Because it's software defined infrastructure, right? It is. Um, when you think about the space, uh, uh, just briefly before we wrap up, keen to get your thoughts on to the, uh, what's over the horizon. So in the next sort of, you know, I guess 12 to 18 months, because this is moving very quickly, um, uh, what's your general sense of, of sort of, you know, where Verizon's going to be and, and what are the big challenges that you're facing in this enterprise space? What should be people, what should people be thinking about planning for and, and, and you know, when they pick up the phone and talk to you, as it were, if you'll pardon the pun? Sure. Uh, what are the big things they should be thinking about and planning for? Sure, absolutely. I mean, uh, we see a lot of uh, emerging trends, right? One is um, around how uh, the the intersection will exist between the enterprise and what's happening with, with 5G networks. Right. Um, and what 5G networks are going to be enabling, things like in the future with network mm -hmm. slicing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then how does the, the enterprise application or the enterprise needs uh, um, uh, how are they better enabled as a result of the technology, what, what right. those technologies enable. Um, uh, so that's one of the key things I think we're going to be uh, definitely looking at. Uh, and in addition to that, you're also going to be looking at the intersection of um, how these networks and their particular uh, need to adopt disruptive technologies like IoT in order to facilitate right. their business. Right. Um, that in itself also intersects the, 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 the disruption of this functionality. Other aspect of things is uh, around the particular application. So if, you're, if your business need is, is around things like AR or VR functionality mm -hmm. in order to facilitate some, some, some yep. core business function, operations, whatever it may be, 
or for the per for certainly for the function of, of gaming how do we enable that capability uh, but still go back to driving all, all of the, the basic routing and all the basic yeah, security yeah. Um, the self-healing self-defending and self-securing uh, capabilities are, are going to be one of the key things that that uh, we believe uh, businesses are going to be demanding from uh, all the, the functionality that not just Verizon we will be br bringing together uh, but also between the partnerships Verizon will also have with, the, with all the vendors we it's an interesting point you raised because uh, it immediately sort of draws, draws to mind the, the, the likelihood of me with my son out on the road uh, wandering around looking for the next Pokemon versus a first responder using ARVR to save a life. Um, well, look, thank you so much for making time to catch up with me on camera. It's been an absolute pleasure to get to know you and uh, what you're doing within the Verizon and the partnership with uh, Ericsson. And uh, certainly going to be keeping a close eye on what you're both doing to uh, bring new exciting things to, uh, I guess, the enterprise space and, and mobility around that. And uh, congratulations on a, on a fantastic event this, uh, this week and I guess uh, this year in general for you guys. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, folks, with that, we'll wrap up. Uh, I'm Des Blanche. We'll be here at the Ericsson 2018 OSS BSS uh, user group. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for joining us.